my YouTube channel, my YouTube show, the live art broadcast, where I've been working on this group shot here of the X-Men. So I know it's been a while since I last broadcast, um, so broadcasted, broadcasted? I did, last time I did a broadcast. How about we go with that? So, uh, you know, it's been the holiday season. It's December 30th, so we're about to wrap up 2017. Uh, so I was away for the Christmas holiday. I've been also working on three projects for 2018. So I can't say what those are yet, but they are eating up so much of my time. Once I get past this one major cover project, I hope we'll, hopefully we'll have more free time with the other two projects I'm working on. But as soon as those publishers announce the, the books that I'm working on, I'll be sharing on all my social media and letting you know where you can find my work next. But today, we are going to add another character here. I'm actually working today by taking some time off because it's been too long since we last uh, got a chance to hang out. So I thought, let's, let's at least do a, a broadcast where I can at least get one more character drawn. So we're going to add... Um, Jubilee here. So originally, I, I, if you remember from the first episode, we, uh, we, when I let, roughed all the characters in, I made this Ilyana, uh, Rasputin, uh, magic from the New Mutants. But when I decided to go with the 90s era X-Men, magic wasn't around. She had been age reverted back to her true age during the Inferno storyline in the late 80s, so by the early 90s, she wasn't really a part of the X-Men universe, and if she was, she was a seven-year-old girl living in Russia. So, gotta switch her out, because we're going all 90s here. You'll recognize all the X-Men here are in their 19, roughly early 1990s costumes. So, we're gonna switch out Iyana for Jubilee. So, enough jibber-jabber, I'm gonna flip the camera around, start drawing, and, um, and I'll do my best to answer your questions while I draw. So, feel free to post. Now, Please know that I can't always catch every question because so much of my focus goes into the art, but I'll do my best to catch whatever questions I can and chat with you while I draw. And if there's time at the end, I'll do a, a Q&A to wrap up the show where I can answer a handful more questions before we sign off. So thanks so much for tuning in. Let's flip the camera around and get to drawing. Oops, didn't quite flip. There we go. Flipped, flipped. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you are here. So uh, let's reposition repos the rig. Just bear with me. Sorry for the jostling gang. Let's get zoomed in here on Jubilee, or what will soon become Jubilee. There we go. So, as you can see, we kind of have Ilyana's bangs there and everything, but, uh, but this will no longer be um, magic. It will, will make this uh, Jubilee. So, just going to do a little erasing here and kind of restructure this for Jubilee. Won't need the sword. Leaves more room for Storm. So, uh, did I take the pages out? No, the pages to the comic are still inside here. I just uh, opened it up to the double page spread and filled it in, or taped it to, the, to this cardboard to keep the interior safe. Sorry for the gag there, gang. Get her hair going here. Julie has very fun hair to draw. That kind of late 80s, early 90s, kind of sticky uppy, messy hair. She's very, she was a Quite the 80s mall rat. That's pretty much from California. That's where the ladies of the X-Men... Well, they didn't really encounter her there, but when they went on a shopping spree after a big battle, kind of to wind down Dazzler, Psylocke, pre-Ninja Psylocke, Storm and Rogue, uh, they went to California via their Australian friend. Well, this back when the X-Men lived in Australia, and the Outback, and... Uh, the Aborigine Teleporter Gateway sent them to, opened a, a portal for them to go to California, and uh, Jubilee saw them heading back, and 
She was, I think she was homeless. I don't think she had a family, so uh, she decided to jump through the portal. And uh, ended up becoming an inadvertent X-Man. By hitching a ride through a teleportational portal. Let's see. Give her a smile here. Collar to her jacket. Put in one hand right there. The other hand here. some uh, plasma burst from her fireworks. That's right, Gateway did let her through. He, yeah, Gateway was... He did know she was going to be important. Uh, she actually rescued Wolverine when the Reavers returned and crucified Wolverine on that big X. Um, she, uh, yeah, Gateway was very en enigmatic. He... he he didn't just teleport people, he knew why he was teleporting people, or tele teleporting X-Men uh, went at times when they were needed. I don't know if they ever explained how he knew, I guess it was maybe a part of his mutant power, but uh, like the time he sent Colossus to Limbo to keep Ilyana from uh, casting a necromancer spell to bring Peter back, to bring Colossus back, and... Uh, so she didn't. Get, she thought she completed the spell, but she didn't know that it was the real Colossus that had been sent there to help her fight off Sim and the the hordes of um, his demon hordes of Limbo, as they were. It was just prior to uh, the Inferno, one of my all-time favorite comic book stories slash X Men crossovers. Definitely, probably my favorite X Men crossover. Probably Marvel crossover as well. Let's see, and then her jacket would hang down here. Gonna have a little bit of background down here, like have them kind of in a on platforms, so I'll have to start inking all that in at some point. And then maybe a part of her leg right there. So alright, let's uh so I was using a lot of people ask what pencils I use. I try to remember to mention that. So I'm using the Uni Kuratoga 0.3 HB lead mechanical pencil. So let's uh, start dropping in some inks with the Pigma, Pigma Micron pens. See, it says very bad connection. Are we doing okay, gang? Are we all together here? Hopefully I'm still broadcasting. So using the zero one micron here. Fine on your end? Okay, cool, cool. Just want to make sure that uh, the broadcast was going through.
Yes, this is Jubilee. That is absolutely correct. Did I ever consider more, uh, Drucker from Mad Magazine as an influence? Um, I definitely uh, enjoyed his work, but I don't know if I consider him like a, a heavy influence. I was probably influenced in some, in some way, but not, uh, not a constant or consistent um, influence. But definitely inspiring work. I didn't get to read a lot of Mad Magazine growing up. But those I did get to read, I enjoyed. Just get some fingers going there. hair going. Hair can be challenging to draw, but once you start to kind of figure out the puzzle, or the puzzles, because you can have so many different styles of hair, it can be really, really fun. I like to look at real life, you know, real reference, you know, uh, hairstyle photos to um, study how to draw hair. Especially when it's hair like that kind of women's hair that kind of cascades and has those curls uh, that fall. That, that, that can be really fun to draw, but definitely needs uh, real life uh, photo reference to base it off of. Because... Um, uh, it can be a bit of a puzzle to figure out how to get those curls to flow right, to cascade correctly. Someone said they just got into their first choice of university for an art degree. Right on. Good luck with that. Hope you have fun. Hope you learn a lot. Did I ever find the X-Men universe to be a bit confusing because of all the retcons? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it can be confusing, but I didn't let that stop me from enjoying the stories. Or at least it hasn't stopped me yet. I love to go back and reread my favorite stories. Many of them I've been getting in the hardcovers, like the uh, Mutant Massacre, Follow the Mutants, and of course, Inferno and the Inferno crossover issues. Am I going to color this? Yes, uh, this should, uh, I should be taking this to color using Copic markers, but we still have lots more X-Men to do before we get to that point. Definitely won't be doing color in this video. Got to do all the inks first, then we'll do, then we'll do colors, later on. After all the X Men have been 
penciled and inked. Right now, at this rate, I do one X-Men per broadcast. Which characters are next in this drawing? Now, I don't know what order I'll be doing them in, uh, but uh, we have Bishop and Storm. They'll probably be in the next bro One of them will be the next broadcast because they're, they're next in the foreground. Uh, we have Dazzler, uh, Gambit and Rogue, Havoc, um, Psylocke, uh, Polaris, and I put Rachel, Rachel, well, technically she was Rachel Summers back then, uh, Cyclops and Jean's daughter from the, an alternate future, but, um, but we'll see if she ends up staying, because I'm not sure where she was at come early 90s, I think she had kind of been written out for a, for a time, so I might replace her like I have magic. Is Angel in this piece? Well, Archangel is. Um, he's over here on the other side. I'll, I'll, I'll show that a little bit later on. Actually, I'll go ahead and show now. So we have Archangel, Iceman, Colossus, Scott, Jean, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, Kitty Pride, Beast, and now Jubilee. Buckle, a little buckle there on her, on her jacket, and it runs down to here, her little trench coat. What kind of paper do I recommend using with Copics? Um, I use Bristol board. I use um, Strathmore or Canson. I use a uh, I get whichever brand is on sale. Um, they're both good. Uh, Smooth Bristol Board is my preferred um, paper I used for my uh, Copic color illustrations. So now I'm switching to the 005, an even finer tip, to draw the seams on the fingers of her gloves. Just those little details that can be a lot of fun. Happy little details. What's my favorite Iron Man armor? Um, I like the Silver Centurion, the red and white one, and the 1970s, 80s. Is that considered the Mach 4? The, um, but that, the one that he wore in the late 70s through early 80s, the red and yellow one. I like the retro looks. What is your favorite uh, Iron Man armor? Have I tried any other alcohol markers besides Copic? Uh, not really, not really. I've had other marker companies come by. They come by our tables. Oh, Mark 42, that's right. It was called the Mark 42, right on. Oh, no, th is that the one you like? You love Bob Layton's design. Yeah, Bob Layton is... An X Men, le or not an X Men, an Iron Man legend. Don't know if he really did much work with the X Men. Not as much as he did with Iron Man. He's definitely known for his Iron Man work. Really cool guy, too. But yeah, uh, the marker, pen and marker companies will come by our tables uh, at some conventions, especially San Diego Comic Con, and bring us by samples of their uh, markers. So I've had touch and Prismacolor come by and give me samples of their markers, but I'm so invested in my Copic collection that I'm not looking to uh, change brands uh, just yet. I'm really happy with Copic. I've built up quite a collection. There's such an investment in there. I'm not looking to invest in a whole new brand of marker. That's the main reason why I, I stick with Copic. Well, not the, it's one of the reasons why 
I stick with Copic, but the main reason why I'm not looking to switch up. So it's not to say anything bad about Prismacolor or um, Touch or any other brand. It's just I, I'm really happy with Copic and very invested in my collection. Grab my pencil here. I want to put a little reflection in her shades. Kind of rough that in. Make sure I get the shape right. What's the lifetime of a Copic marker for me before it runs out and and I and you have to refill it. Well, you know, it all depends. It depends on what I'm illustrating, the color I'm using, and how much color I have to use. Um, so it's hard to gauge the lifetime because um, every illustration is different. If I'm doing something that has a lot of red in it, I could use up a lot of red in a very short time. So, but usually I have to refill after, once after each con convention appearance. because most people want Copic color commissions from me during a convention. So usually I make sure I'm refilled before each convention. Okay, so shorts, leg, down to the upper calf. Maybe we'll see a little bit of her boot. A little booty. How am I? I'm doing well. How are you? Go ahead and start putting in some uh, platforms, like they're in the X Mansion, like a war room or something like that. How it has different levels. So using a French curve here, just drawing in a little tech, tech dot background platform. So just staggering the lines. Just like that, boom, boom, boom. See, that would probably come over to here, through, behind Kitty and Beast. See Colossus. Just go ahead and take care of some of these. Maybe it arcs around this way. It's a little bonus here. Just want to see. So this would run behind Colossus. So just the way I angle the the pen allows me to create these little zigzag tech circuitry shapes. So it takes a lot of practice, but I kind of feel confident to zib zab, zib zab, zib zab. Just uh, helps me make those little shapes fairly quickly, fairly easily. It's actually fun to do. So it looks like there's circuitry and tech all up in there, all cerebro y and computer y. Then some lines might just be Oops, didn't realize I was off camera. So sorry, gang. Didn't really so I just dropped in those lines there. Pop some over here. Little zib zabs. You can make it as dense or as sparse 
as you want or need or feel inclined to do. It's your control room, your happy little control room. You're in charge of the circuitry. You're in charge of the tech. Tech it out the way you want. But it's those little details that that can bring the uh, bring the the environment together. So let's uh, put in some vertical lines in here using a T square. Bring a vertical line down behind Nightcrawler's tail. Little diagonal. Sh Diagonal line there. Let's do the same over here on the far side. Just randomly. Don't want it to look too, too um, evenly spaced. You want some close together, some further apart for design elements. Because design elements. If everything's too evenly spaced, it uh, could be a bit uh, not sure the right word, monotonous. You want to kind of just stagger things appropriately. You can always take a moment to step back, take a look, see, do I need to change? Where do I have certain lines? Do I need to move? Make sure not. You just want to make sure you, you fall into every line is exactly the same. Same spacing from one vertical line or horizontal line. Oops, so sorry. Didn't realize I wasn't on screen for that little bit of tech there. Um, so that's enough for now. Just kind of helps bring this side's background together as we, because I'm going to need to start putting in platforms to where each of the characters are standing because some characters are not flyers like Havoc. He doesn't fly, but how do you get way up there? Well, he's up in a platform here in the, in the war room or in the danger room. Maybe they're all gathered in the danger room. So let's see. I need to put in some of the Plasma Fireworks for, for Jubilee. So I've been saving some space there. So I'm going to use my uh, collection of colored Pigma Microns. So you use the red, some green, and some blue. And I can kind of, this will kind of give a col uh, the illusion of a color hold, like I did here with Iceman. Like sometimes you see in the comics, the line art for Iceman is blue. It gives them more, makes it look more like an ice effect. They do that digitally in, in the colors. Uh, they convert our black and white line art to blue, but since I'm drawing this as a commission style piece, same with the, the pink here on Archangel's uniform, uh, I'm drawing in what I would consider to be knocked back line art. So, so when I come in to do colors, there will be the 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 the, the fireworks and sparkles will um, already be. Uh, it'll give them more of a glowy effect. So a little red there. Let's try a little blue. So it gives it more of an ethereal sort of flavor. So a little blue. Let's put in a little green. And since I don't have a yellow, oops, sorry gang, didn't mean to bump the camera. I'm going to use a little brown, a br little brown to signify yellow. It'll still work. Also, it would work well for orange if I need to do, oh, I think I have a pink as well. Let's get some pink in there. Pink is a very popular Jubilee color.
There we go. So we got some fireworks popping for Jube. Jubilee. Put those away. All right, and let's grab the Pigma Micron, or not the Pigma Micron, what am I talking about? I just used, ah, uh, there's my Stetler Mars plastic eraser. Just gonna do a little light erasing here. Oops, I forgot to do a part of her collar here. That's okay, I can still fill that in after I erase. So it's not a heavy erase, just taking out some of the lines there. Don't want to make sure I don't erase any of the characters we'll be adding later. Alright, so back to the Pigma Micron 01. And putting the uh, ridges into her collar. Do I have plans for Wild Guard in 2018? Um, I would, I'm working on a sh Wild Guard short story right now, but because of work being so heavy, I've got three different projects I'm working on. I haven't been able to focus on the Wild Guard stuff, so I don't know when the Wild Guard story will be ready. And for those of you that don't know, Wild Guard is my creator-owned series, my original characters. Uh, I've already done, tw I did 12 Wild Guard comics in the early to late 2000s. 2003 to 2009, I guess, during those six years. And uh, but I hope to do more with Wild Guard when I get some free time to do so. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but thank you for reading Wild Guard. Yeah. Do I follow kind of modern age artists like Draw with Jazza and the rest of them? Uh, some, some. I'm familiar with many. Um, I've met a few of, of them, like uh, some of the other YouTube gang, like uh, Comic Block and um, Ahmed Alduri and uh, who else? Um, why am I blinking on his name? Ah, it's too early in the morning for me. I, I can't, I can't think of his name, but I'm familiar with Draw with Jazza. I just have not met Jazza. Let's beef up some of these lines a little bit, add a little more hair here and there. more wrinkles in her collar. Maybe run the seam down the front of her shirt. So I think we're good there on Jubilee. So, so this was a quick uh, art video here. I've got a lot of work to do today, so I'm going to get back to work. So I only have time to draw one character here. We got Jubilee. Here is the whole shot of the X-Men group. Hopefully, I can meet up with y'all again. And either I'll be drawing Bishop next time or Storm, depending on the amount of time I have. So it'll be one of these two. Then we'll probably go Dazzler. Gambit and Rogue, maybe we'll do them as a one, one separate video since the two of them are so close together. Then we have Havoc, Psylocke, Polaris, and that might still be Rachel Gray. It might end up becoming someone else. Um, or Rachel Summers, because back in the 90s she was still Rachel Summers. But this is, this is the work we've done so far. I'll be posting a shot of this on my social media soon. So let me flip the camera around. We'll do a quick Q&A to catch any questions I might have missed. So if you want to start typing your questions, feel free. And we'll do a little Q&A to close out the show here for a few minutes. And then I got to get back to work. So let me uh, flip the camera back around. Hey, there we go. How's it going, gang? 
Let me uh, adjust the camera, or the rig, I should say, so I can uh, see you guys and see your questions. Man, this rig does, I'm so sorry for the jostling. If this was a commission piece with a deadline, how fast can you finish this with color? If I was just solely focusing on this illustration um, and I wasn't, you know, having, I wasn't like doing a broadcast where I'm talking and, and my brain is doing two different things, drawing and talking, which can slow me down. So if it's just strictly, I'm just by myself working on this, this might take me a few days to, um, to, to pencil, ink, and color, and that's like full work days. So uh, I'd say if I'm, if I'm really in the zone, maybe two days, if, if there's different factors that come into play, you, you just never know. It could take as many as three days, but, um, but usually, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's when I'm in the zone, the, 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 the further I get into the work day, the more kind of feeling the vibe. So yeah, so we'll just say, <laughs> all this to say, Maybe two or three days, if all goes well. Which current X-Men series would I recommend reading? Uh, X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue are both a lot of fun. I've also been enjoying Astonishing X-Men. So uh, right now I'm just reading the team books. I'm way behind on the solo character books. What am I drawing next? I don't know when the next broadcast will be. Hopefully next weekend, but possibly sometime during next week. I just don't know. My work schedule's crazy heavy. I got three big projects I'm working on that will be coming out in 2018. As soon as the publishers say what they are, I'll be telling you guys and gals what it is and where to find it. Wolverine as Santa and Nightcrawler as his elf, lol. That is funny, especially since Nightcrawler is known as the Blue Fuzzy Elf. Exactly. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Don't tease you. What do you mean don't tease you? I, as far as what projects I, 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 I've got going on, I wish I, could, I wish I didn't have to tease. I wish I could just tell you I'm drawing this book and this book and this is the cover project I'm working on. I wish I could say that. I wish I could say here are the titles, but it's not good to get ahead of your publisher. You let your publishers announce first, then you follow in their wake and let everyone know what's going on. Would I ever draw a Wildcats book? Uh, very possibly. Actually, I drew Grifter in Bad Rockin' Company number five, which is a series I did for uh, Rob Liefeld when I first broke into the industry way back in the mid 90s. Um, so I have drawn a Wildcat uh, professionally, yeah. Any 2018 resolutions? Uh, no, no, not really. No, no resolutions um, that I, I, I can speak of, no. I'm not against resolutions, I just don't ever really focus on on doing that necessarily. So uh, it's not to say I don't believe in it or think it's good to do. I just just never really do it. How do I keep my passion for drawing? Uh, in the late 80s, while in high school, you had the same passion but lost it over the years. I'm so sorry you lost it over the years. You know, I've always had a passion for drawing. My earliest memories were of drawing. I just drew all the time. I still draw all the time. It's just something I do and something I love to do and and I, it's, it's weird for me not to draw. Like when I went to see my family for Christmas, I didn't draw really much for a week. So usually around Christmas is the one week, week to 10 days that I do not draw, which it's kind of nice to take a break, but feels kind of weird because it's like I'm not breathing or something. So uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what to say to how, for you to get your passion back, but, uh, but my encouragement to any artist is to have fun. That's why we draw is because it's fun. It's challenging and that can be frustrating sometimes and that's okay because we all feel that but when, I, when I'm faced with a challenge and it's frustrating, I try to find well, where's the fun, where can I find the fun in this moment? And if I'm able to tap into that fun, then I find that I, it, it, makes, it, a little, it makes it a little easier to get through the challenge and hopefully I've come out having learned something in that challenge and hopefully have mastered something just a little bit more. Uh, because I got through it. I did it. You know, how well it turned out is, is neither here nor there. Sometimes it turns out well, sometimes it doesn't. But it, no matter 
whether it turned out well or not, it's still a learning experience. And with that learning, I'm gaining knowledge. I apply that to the next time I faced it with that challenge, and maybe I do it a little bit better. And then maybe I do it a little bit better the next time. So each illustration is a step in our journey um, in trying to achieve, at, at the very least, mastery, and also having fun. So, uh, so with each step, we're hopefully moving forward. Sometimes we have steps backward. That's okay. I say this all the time in my broadcast, but the the but it's something I believe in, something I feel passionately about. And it's find the fun again. If you if you used to love drawing and you haven't done it in a while, find out why you stopped. It kind of is one of those soul searching moments. I've had those soul searching moments in my art journey, whether it was as a professional or as an amateur. Those soul searching moments where it's like, dude, why am I feeling this way or frustrated this way? So. Um, uh, it's something you, you got to keep in mind and um, and push through, work through, but try to find the fun. Because at the end of the day, that's why we do it. I mean, that's the why I, I draw this is because this is fun to do, making these characters come to life and interact with each other. You know, like Scott and Gene, they're kind of paired up here. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a heroic standing shot, but Scott and Gene are kind of close. I got Rogan, Rogan, uh, Rogan, um, Gambit, you know, they're going to be kind of snuggled up together. I got the Beast over here in kind of his classic kind of coach, hand-on-knee, squatting sort of pose with a smile because that's kind of who Beast was back then, still is now, uh, just capturing their personality and making them come to life on, on the page. Let's see, any plans to do, I'm doing a live stream of my Wacom tablet? Yes, sometime in the future, <laughs> probably after I get this X-Men piece done. And also I have to figure out the technology, how to live stream from my, uh, from my tablet um, while I'm working on my tablet. So I'm not shooting the camera onto the tablet. Maybe that's, would that be something I'd want to see? Would you want it to be a screen capture or would you want the camera focused on the screen? Is the resolution okay for those types of videos? These are things that I haven't experienced yet because I'm still new to drawing with a tablet. So uh, it's one of the reasons I've been hesitant to start doing live streams or tablet videos just yet. But they will come. They will come at some point once I figure out what's the best approach to that. Thank you so much for the question. Thanks for everyone's questions. Let's see, you have a character in mind, but you're not good at drawing them yourself. You can copy characters well. Please help. I've been thinking about this character for a long time. You know, um... I'm not sure what kind of help you need. Hopefully these, my videos here, you know, continue to watch through my different videos if you're new to my channel, channel and see if, if my videos help uh, in some way. Uh, but, uh, you know, some people are, you know, they, they, the drawing is their thing. Some people, drawing is not their thing, and that's okay. You know, there are a lot of comic book writers out there that are terrible at drawing, and that's all right. Uh, that's why... Some writers write and artists draw and some writers can draw and so they write and draw and some artists can write so we write and draw. So uh, so it, it can be all sorts of permutations there. Uh, just, yeah. But put down a quick sketch of it, you know, and, and then if you meet up with an artist that you like, you trust, and you have a good relationship with, you know, move forward with that and, and say, hey, I'd like to see your take on this, you know. So, um, but yeah, don't, don't let not being able to draw stop you from creating. Keep on creating. All right, gang, so were there any other? OBS is the best way to do it when using a tablet. OBS, okay, I'll have to look into that. I'll have to look into that. Awesome. Um, gang, thanks so much for hanging out. I gotta get back to work. I appreciate y'all hanging out. Uh, sorry I couldn't catch everybody's questions, uh, but hopefully uh, I'll see you again for another uh, live art broadcast sooner than later, and also, I do a daily Q&A show on my Instagram channel. It's roughly daily. It's called 10-Minute Q&A, where it's just this. No art no art during the Instagram broadcast, mainly because the, the, the videos don't archive. They don't, they don't save, um, at least with my Instagram account, um, maybe because of different settings, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, join me on Instagram. I'm at Todd Knock on Instagram. Follow me, and I usually post... Uh, a q and I do a live Q&A stream. At, I try to do it once a day, sometimes twice a day. Sometimes, you know, it just all depends on the schedule. But it's a chance just to hang out and we can talk comics, 
art and, and general geekery and, and all sorts of other stuff. But I do hope to be back here doing more art broadcasts in 2018, especially once I get... Um, and Facebook broadcasts, yes, I will be doing more Facebook broadcasts, probably more character mashups and things like that in 2018. But once I get my work schedule a little more manageable, I'll be back doing more of those types of broadcasts uh, in 2018. So, um, um, yeah, thanks for all the support, everybody. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, set your notifications so that you can be alerted next time I've got a broadcast. It's the quickest, easiest way to make sure you don't miss out on watching me live. And I appreciate all the support. You are all awesome. Hope you all have a great day, and I hope you have a happy new year. Stay safe, stay sane, be careful out there, and because uh, we want you around for 2018, everybody. Let's be careful uh, uh, and make wise choices here on New Year's Eve. And, uh, yeah, hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll see you again real soon, probably in 2018. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.